studying from the Western tradition east, as it were, right? That I'm studying the medieval tradition and finding out they knew all of this in yes. the 13th century in France. That's why they're building Chartres as this magnificent mm -hmm. ark of Our Lady, that they are seeing her in all of these references and, and stories. They have many of the ancient stories too, like her growing up in the temple and so forth. Um, yes. And they recognize her as the temple and the ark and the, the, all of these great vessels for the presence of, of the Lord. And I got very excited by the work that this um, Methodist uh, Old Testament scholar, Margaret Barker had been doing because she was finding it the same sort of resonances from the other direction, right? Looking at uh, the ways in which things like she started with the book of Isaiah actually she started with book of Enoch and then she worked through Isaiah showing that things like the prophecies of the angel of the Lord make sense of what the Christians actually saw fulfilled in Christ that there there were these there were these prophecies and that we we talk now about Christianity as as being the the heir to Judaism that's completely wrong because Judaism comes com, you know mm. develops as a as a, a you know a, a tradition after the rejection of the temple tradition is fulfilled in Christianity. And, and there's, there's rabbis that say that now it's like the, they see them, they see Judaism oh, yeah. as superseding, it's on Wikipedia. superseding Christianity because Christianity is still the, the more ancient version of things. It's polytheist. It's, it's, you know, this problem of how do you recognize the, there's a book that Peter Schaefer did. He's a Princeton scholar on, um, the two mm -hmm. angels of Israel, right? The two gods of Israel, and and it, the, these this angel imagery, the son of the Most High, that Luke is pointing to, it's all in this ancient temple tradition of the anointing of the king as the son of the Most High, which is what, mm -hmm. in Luke's story, Gabriel tells Mary, Jesus is going to be her son. Jesus is going to be he's going to be the king in in this tradition. I think it's because people are not really understanding what was going on at Pentecost. Right. This feast that was being uh, celebrated was Israelite in every way. It was a temple right. feast. The Hebrews that had arrived in Jerusalem, they were not converts. These are flesh and blood children of the, the tribes that left Exodus, uh, left Egypt during the Exodus. So the, the people that heard all of the apostles, all of the disciples speaking in their tongues, we're looking at Hebrews speaking to other Hebrews that had been absorbed into all of these various nations around right. them. Christianity from the beginning of the gifting of the Holy Spirit to the church has been pointing towards this enormous Israelite diaspora. Mm -hmm. The church is... So the understanding maybe that we've just come from an offshoot, I'm not really sure if it's... People are forgetting that that feast was what it was, but the conversion of the uh, of the Israelites, you know, that that's the central uh, commission to the to the apostles at that time was go and preach to all nations. They had to start with the Hebrews that had been scattered throughout all of those nations. It was only right, later the lost the sheep of Israel. Yes. 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 And so there's no distinction between where the Hebrews had been scattered, if they'd been in the Iberian Peninsula, what we know as modern-day Spain, or if they'd been thrown out into uh, Arabia Felix in modern-day Yemen, or mm -hmm. Ethiopia, or India, or Persia, or Italy, or Greece, we were everywhere. And it was very obvious that the, the apostles understood this because they were running around. <laughs> yes, there's all Why the, the medieval traditions of how they go to the everywhere in the world, right? There's early... Spanish maps, these Beatus Apocalypse maps showing the world map of the world and where all the apostles went. Mm -hmm. um, and, and there's very ancient Indian traditions of Thomas that, yes. that, that he goes there. I mean, when the, the Jesuits show up, they're already Christians <laughs> um, yeah. because because of this. Yes, this this spreading the the, 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 the the spreading. And of course, because they're not actually you're calling them Hebrews or Israelite, but they're mainly speaking Greek which is why they have the Septuagint yes. and it's why the, the Christian New Testament authors depend on the Septuagint for their, their scriptures and why it's, I've said this in a lot of streams, but we're saying this now into this, the, our new one, ours, right? Um, why new uh, Septuagint scholarship now 
recognizes that the Septuagint was the ancient tr tradition, um, that, that the modern yeah. Hebrew differs from it is um, not an indication that the Septuagint was mistranslated. And, and, and the New Testament recognizes the way in which Christ fulfills the prophecies as they're recorded in the, in the Greek. And so the Orthodox Church uses the Septuagint as its, as its scriptures. Yes. Well, the, the Hebrews had been Hellenized. Right. I liked memeing. I, I liked memeing about right. that on my channel a lot, but uh, very much they'd been he completely Hellenized. Well, everybody's been mixed up so, in, in this in this story, right? Mm -hmm. We have the Ptolemies who are Greek, ruling Egypt. We have, <laughs> <laughs> we have the Israelites in Ethiopia. We have the mm -hmm. you know the Israelites scattered from India to Spain, um, and yes. so when Christ comes, it is to the whole world. Clearly, two and two different nations. You know that the nations are clearly there, and the nations are constantly mentioned in in the Psalms as he will be he will rule the nations. So all of the different peoples, um, but mm -hmm. his coming in time, it makes it makes you know sort of story sense as as well as well. God's going to pick the right time because he knows how to make an entrance. But he, <laughs> um, <laughs> it, 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 yes. there there is a human sense of at, at this moment in 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 human history all of these cultures are ready to be able to hear they had they'd been absorbed into a, a an international empire right so greece was like global homo <laughs> um and uh, you know everyone speaks greek everyone's been hellenized so they were primed for that international communication because right. for the first time uh we had that enormous land uh land mass you know that enormous amount of, of territory speaking the same language so Christ could not have done what he had, what he did, uh, and obviously what he decided to do in arriving as the Alpha and Omega, unless everyone understood what the Alpha and Omega was. Right. Right. Mm. So we say that the the Christianity is fulfilling this this temple, these temple prophecies, and recovering yes. the Ark. Right. That the Ark is gone. I mean, yes. that's that's where the the Ethiopian story has you know, plausibility because we don't know where the Ark is. Um, mm -hmm. And yet it's very clear that the New Testament authors think they know. Um, and there's and there's two ways that um, is shown. One is in Luke, exactly where we were looking uh, after um, Gabriel comes to Mary and, and, and tells her that she's going to be the, the mother of the Most High. She goes and visits her sister, her cousin, sister, her cousin Elizabeth. Right again, another of these great mm -hmm. two pregnant women meeting, and their and their children leap in their wombs at the recognition of each other. Clearly showing that yes, life begins in the womb. Um, <laughs> um, there's wonderful medieval images of of that visitation, right? Of this meeting of the two pregnant, the two pregnant mothers, and Mary's like three months pregnant. No, Mary's. Elizabeth is six months pregnant and Mary is newly conceived. But anyway, so John leaps in his mother's womb and all of the language in the description here, which is also going to end up with Mary singing the Magnificat, right? The first great Christian song Mary sings, my soul doth magnify the Lord. But her going, her traveling and going up to the mountains and such, Scott Hahn is a, a lovely reading of this in his Hail Holy Queen of how Luke is very purposefully um, replicating in his narrative David's taking the ark up into, into Jerusalem, um, and mm. and you know coming to the, Elizabeth comes out to meet the my Lord in Mary who's carrying the Lord who's carry is is the ark carrying it, and and you can tell that this is a temple story because of the first chapter in Luke where we have um, John's conception and his his father serving in the temple, right so. We, we're just replete with temple imagery. Of course, Mary is the ark, the physical vessel of the Lord who is going to be there for. And this is where, you know, the proper the properness in the in the in the Christian tradition is that she is she has to be as pure as she is, because what else are, what else is going to be the, the carrier for the Lord? I mean, there's there's a kind of logic to yes. it. Um, there was also Anne Barnhart um, had a, a lovely repost on her. Um, on her blog the the other day of, of or yesterday because yeah, this is for the Feast of the Assumption where she's talking about the Immaculate Conception and the Assumption as scientifically 
um, necessary in, in, in sort of thinking about energy and light and so forth. But she has this wonderful passage where she's talking about, you know, what it, what it, what it means to say um, Mary was the, the mother of our Lord and, you know, why she had to be immaculately conceived because from the very moment of her conception, she carries all of her eggs. <laughs> men, uh, unlike men who are continuously producing new sperm, a woman's eggs aren't created and formed with each menstrual cycle. We have them when we're when we're in the womb, which which is of course the yes. horrible evil of all of the, the the COVID shots um, being given to pregnant women, given disrupting women's menstrual cycles. We have all of our our eggs when we're when we're when we're when we're, when we're in our own mother's womb, which means that. Mary did, right? And so Mary was, from the time yes. she was inside St. Anne's womb, already carrying a portion of our Lord's physicality, namely 23 of his chromosomes. Yes. And thus, Mary was, from her very beginning, already a proto-tabernacle, <laughs> already the Ark of the New Covenant, carrying within her what would be consecrated into the law incarnate, the high priest and the mm. bread of life, just like the old Ark, except perfected and fully fulfilled as God incarnate. And as we know from the book of Exodus, the old ark had to be perfect. The part I just read, right? And thus the ark of the new covenant was truly perfect, except this perfection was a perfection that only God himself could accomplish. The perfection of Mary, full mm -hmm. of grace, and thus saved from all sin, including original sin. Um, and that perfection, think, thinking that... Um, God gives Moses the instructions on how to build the ark. God gives him the pattern on how to build this this yes. this vessel for his presence. That th I mean, that's what we understand of Mary. Of course, she's a creature of God. That's the whole. You know, we all are, right? He makes her mm -hmm. to be his tabernacle, to be his ark, to be his mother, yes. and therefore she needs to be made perfect from from the beginning of time from beginning because she is his ark and, and i just I, I don't understand why this logic isn't completely clear but i like that barn i like that barnhart <laughs> points out there's a biological argument too in, in the sense of our carrying all of the eggs from our our own conception as women i mean the holiness yes. of women is in our carrying of life from the very moment of our life it's a continuous continuous mm. i'm talking about from eve right this this continuous life if we are alive now Absolutely, every single one of our mothers was fertile. The 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 scriptures also celebrate when all the begats, right? If you have the begat, the begat, the yes. begat, the begat, the begat, the begat, the begat, you you are in the continuity of life from the very beginning. Mm. I don't think we take our first parents seriously enough, frank, frankly. <laughs> um, and the temple of God was opened in heaven, and the ark of His testament was seen in His temple. And there were lightnings and voices and an earthquake and great hail. And a great sign appeared in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and on her head a crown of twelve stars. And being with child, she cried travailing in birth and was in pain to be delivered. And there was seen another sign in heaven and behold a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and his head seven diadems. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to be delivered, that when she should be delivered, he might devour her son. And she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with an iron rod. And her son was taken up to God and to his throne. 